All right, let's continue making the GPT disk image here today. Last time we wrote a basic skeleton for the EFI system partition as far as having the EFI and boot folders underneath the FAT32 file system in that partition on our disk. So to be able to use that, I'm going to try and automatically add a file if it's in the current directory that this is being run from, this write GPT program. If we find a boot 64efi file, let's say, we find this in the current directory, I wanna add that automatically under this boot folder here so that if we boot from our disk image, it'll find that in this location and it'll boot automatically our EFI application. So to do that, I'm gonna make a function or two and I want to somehow take this file or take this path, parse it out and know where to add this file within the file system, the FAT32 file system, add the appropriate clusters in the file allocation tables and the data in the data region and so on and so forth for a file that we pass to a function. So I'm gonna to try to do that. Uh, later I'll make a command line flag probably to have a path and a file be separate because that might be easier for that interface. But as far as a function to add a file, I'm probably just gonna have it concatted together as a full path to add. Um, and just because I may be using things in separate places again, I might make a couple extra variables in global space for LBAs as far as where the FAT32 file allocation tables start and where the data region starts, I might just make those globals. I had data LBA in the current function, which kind of shadows the global variable, so that's bad. So that's why I put that. But so I'm thinking what I can do for this function, add path to ESP, we'll say if it takes in a path and the image we're going to write to, I'm going to parse that path. So say it's EFI boot, we pass this whole thing as a path here to add this boot x64 file under the boot folder, I want to parse that out and get each name in the path corresponding to a directory. Or if we're at the end of the path, then this name doesn't end in a slash or just be the end, and that would be the file to add. So I want to get each name in there. And assuming we found a directory, it's not at the end of the path, we want to find that in the current directories, uh, directory entries data in the FAT32 data region. So under root starts at cluster two, and in that area in the data region, it will have directory entries for EFI and maybe other stuff. Right now it's only EFI. So if I, if I parse this path and I find the name EFI, I wanna search for that name in the directory entries under root. If we find it, we want to go to where EFI's data is in the data region, according to its cluster in the directory entry. And then we can search its directory entries from that point for the next name in the path, so on and so forth. And when we don't have any more directories to add, we're at the end of the path, We'll add an entry for this file, and we'll add the data for this file at whatever cluster that's gonna to correspond to. Uh, if there are any directories in here that aren't in the file system, because right now we only have EFI and boot, I wanna to try to make this more general. And if we find a directory that's not there, I wanna add that as well. So I'll try to make it add new directories and a new file at the end, so it can be more general purpose. The previous versions I did of this disk image did not add directories. So I figure I'll add a value, do a value add for this, hopefully make it a little better. But okay, that's my basic logic that I want to try to do there. I might have that call out to another function, just in case to add the file or directory itself. And to be able to do that, I'll probably be updating the next free cluster value within the file system info sector or LBA. Initially, it should point to five, which right now I'm only filling out zero to four, those clusters for the EFI boot set up. So any new file would start at five. So I might set it that to begin with and update it later so we don't have to calculate or run through all the clusters to find the next free number, which is just the first cluster equal to zero in the file allocation tables. But assuming we have the first free one, we can go and add a cluster at that location. If it's a directory that we're adding, we only need to add uh, one cluster to start for the end of chain mark. If it's a file, we'd have to add the number of clusters equal to the number of sectors for the file data, since I'm using one sector per cluster in the VBR. And then the last cluster would be an end of chain mark still to end the file data there. After that, we'd go to the cluster of the containing directory for this file, its parent directory. We'd have to add a directory entry for this new file. A directory would have the directory attribute bit set and its file size would be zero. Uh, a file would just, you know, it would have its file size. It would not be zero because it's not a directory. At that point, we'd go to wherever this file is going to be at, its cluster location, and then we'd write data for the file. So for a directory, we'd just write directory entries, dot and dot dot. 
corresponding to this directory itself or its parent directory, wherever cluster that is at. If it's a file, I would just write the file data itself to that, uh, that data region sector location. So there's a bit of duplicate logic between here. I can reduce, not have two fully separate things. And I figure for that function, if I want it to work for both, I can probably do something like this where I take in the name, I take in the type of the file, assuming the type is a directory or a file for logic purposes, comparisons there. And I can take in a parent cluster value so that we know where the parent directory is on disk. That way I can use it for say the dot dot if we're adding a directory or I know where to go on disk to add the directory entry to the, uh, to the parent directory. So given that cluster value or some other way of finding the parent. And that's my goal for this. Hopefully it doesn't take, you know, two hours like the last video, but we'll see. Uh, this may or may not be the second time attempting to record this because the other time took way too long and I was, it, it was bad, but I got the first draft out of the way. That's what this bad recording test file is. But anyway, I did have one slight, slight change to my, uh, my shell script to run QEMU. I just added net none because I don't like Pixie Boot. So that's all this. That's all this modified file is, but all right. How are we going to add this stuff? Well, my main purpose is to add that bootx64 EFI file. So I'm going to put that at the end of main here as an example. So check if bootx64 EFI file exists in, check if it exists in the current directory. If so, we'll say automatically add it to the ESP, to the EFI system partition. So we'll do that. So let's say we have file. Maybe I'll use other files as well. So let's say, uh, I might add it at the top here. I'll just say FP, some generic FP here. Add it after that. So let's say we want to open boot x64 EFI. We'll open it for reading, say binary. If we don't have FP, we don't have to worry about it. But if we do have the file, I'm just checking if it exists really. And I'm gonna open it later anyway, but just for existence checking, I'll close it. And we'll send it off to this function we're gonna write to add it to the file system. So let's say we have a path that we're gonna give to our new function. And the path will say, I don't know, is some amount of bytes wide say like 100 or 25 or 50, I'll just say 25. We'll say we have a path for EFI boot, boot x64.efi. So ultimately I wanna pass a full complete file path to this function and this function should parse the path, get each directory in the path, add that directory if it doesn't exist and then add the file at the end to the last found or added directory here. So I need to send the full path, not just the name if I wanna do it that way. So we'll say if not, and depending how this is actually, this is a string literal. So that will be in read only memory. So if I try to evaluate characters in this path, I might get seg faults. So actually I'm going to just allocate this here. And then we'll string copy into path this value. And I know this is less than 25. That's why I did that specifically. This is like, um, what is this, 21 characters? Okay, so that's all right. So we'll say add path to ESP. And I guess I'll make it return a Boolean or not. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just go on. Yeah, if it doesn't work, we still made the disk image we can go on, but if it does work, I don't know. I guess I'll say, we'll, we'll print an error if it doesn't, but we'll pass the path and I'll pass the image that contains the FAT32 file system that we can add to. We'll just print an error here. So I'll say could not add percent %s, I'll say file or path, and we'll say file. We'll just do that. It's a one-liner. Okay, whether it completes or not, we can go on because the image itself was still made. Let's say we have a function for that. So I'll put it above main, might as well. So I'll say add a file path to the EFI system partition. 
We'll add new directories if not found and a new file at end of path. That's what we'll say. A bool add path to ESP. We have character path and a file pointer for the image. By default, we'll say maybe, hopefully it returns true. And okay, I'm gonna fill this out. So before I do that though, <laughs> I am gonna add the, the two other LVA values that I just remembered I put down in that list of items. So we have sizes and LBAs, we have locations and LBAs. I guess I'll add it here. Let's do FAT32 FATS LBA, FAT32 data LBA. So this will be the starting location of the file allocation tables and the data region after those tables, we'll say. We'll do that. So where I'm writing the ESP though, I have a couple things that I'm gonna use for that. So this fat OBA, I'm gonna move that up right before we write the file system info sector and where I get the data OBA as well. So I don't want to call this data LBA because my I already have a global data LBA down here. That's kind of confusing. I already have this one, but it's not that one because <laughs> it's not the basic data partition. It's for the fat data region. So I'm going to name these fat32 data LBA and fat32 fats LBA. But they'll have the same value, but now they're global. We can use it in more than one place. So that's good. And also the next free count, let's initialize to five. So first available cluster, value equals zero, after EFI boot. Because down where we write the clusters, we'll have zero, one, two, three, and four. We won't have five or above. So the first available one we can write to that's not allocated is gonna be five here. And that way we don't have to run through all the clusters to find the next free one. We can just take the value that's already there and update it as needed later on. So Okay. What am I doing with the fat OBA? Did I use that down here? Probably. I don't remember where. Here we have fat OBA right here. So we would do fat32 fats OBA when we're writing each file allocation table. And then when we go to the data OBA, that's not gonna be correct. We'll have to do fat32 data OBA for the data region. And I think we're okay. As long as I update these down here. Just for the EFI and the boot folders. And I think that's all I have to do there. We can see if we have an issue. Of course we have an issue. That OBA undeclared. Well, that's why we get compile errors. So they tell me where I'm wrong. That 32 fats OBA. All right, invalid initializer, C alloc 125, that doesn't work. Thought that did. Nope, that doesn't work. I need to do, all right. I wanted it to be 25 characters, but you don't initialize it to an array, yeah. <laughs> you just initialize it to a pointer and it coerces that void pointer into a character if I do that, okay. Oh, all right, unused, that's fine. Unused vars are all right, that's only in here. Okay. So what am I going to do with this? Uh, so we're given a path, we need to parse that path. So we'll say parse input path for each name. Let's do that first while we're at it. So what is a good way of handling this? We could index into that with like an I or J value or something and do like, you know, path I equals a slash or something to find the name. I'm gonna do it slightly differently with a couple pointers, I think. I'm gonna have start. And that'll be path plus one, so we skip the initial slash. So skip initial slash. I want to make sure the name's fully qualified as well. So let's say if the beginning character is not a slash, I'm going to return false. So path must begin with root, just in case. Makes things a little bit easier. But we'll skip the initial slash, and we'll say we have an end pointer, which will equal start. And in between start and end, we'll have our name that we're looking for. Um, I'm gonna have an overall loop because I wanna check for multiple names. So right now we'll just set an infinite loop and break out of it later. 
But let's say within that to get the next name. So get next name from path. We'll say while the data at end is not a slash and it's not a null, then we'll just increment the pointer. So the path is going to be null terminated, a null terminated string. Right? At least starting off, yeah, it did string copy. So if it's at the end of the path and we didn't find a directory, we know we found a file, else we know we found a directory. So I can say if and is a slash, then we found a directory. And what I'm going to do is probably have something to differentiate between a path and a, uh, between a file and a directory. I'm just gonna have another enum or something up here. And that'll be all right. Global constants and enums, I guess I'll just put it well, I might type def it actually. I'll type def it. So I'll say fat32 file types. <laughs> and we'll have type directory and type file. Simple enough. And I'll call it file type. That's a directory versus a normal file. So I don't really need to put this, but I will. Just put regular file. Okay, so now that we have that, I can set a type here. Let's say maybe up above here. File type type. So we want to keep getting names from a path until we are at the end of the path. And I know when we're at the end of the path, when it's the last name and we end in a null. At that point, we have found the file at the end of the path to add to a directory. So I'll say while we're still finding directories, maybe. And I can start it off as that to have it initialized. So get next name from path um, until reached end of path for file to add. I guess we'll do that. But I know here if I have a slash type is going to equal type directory Else we've reached null, so type will equal type file. Reached end of path. Now if I want to get the name between the slashes or until the end, and it is not a slash, it won't really matter here. I can just set it to null. If it's already a null, that's fine. If it's not a null, we found a directory anyway, and we can end it with a slash so that if we take a pointer starting at start, it will end at end as a normal string for the name. It'll be the name between the slashes because we replace the ending one with a null here, so that'll be good. Null terminates next name in case of directory. Okay, so now what we can do is search for name in current directories uh, file data. It's directory entries. A good way of doing that, plural, that's plural, yeah. So how do we do that? We have to seek to the location on the disk. I guess we'll need a cluster value to do that. And I do want to pass on the parent directory's cluster value later on, like how I had in that, in that uh, document of to-do items. So I'll have a cluster value as well. Let's say we have, uh, cl well, cluster's a bit generic here. Maybe directory cluster started out at two. So next, directories cluster location, start at root. The so root is at cluster two because the first two clusters in a file allocation table are reserved. So that's why I'm doing that. But if I do that, we can just F seek the image to the location in the data region, which is fat OBA. And then we can offset from that location to the cluster value. But since we add two clusters, I'm gonna have to subtract that off. And the reason I'm doing this, adding and subtracting two every time, is so that the first cluster is gonna be at zero. <laughs> so two minus two is zero. The next one's gonna be at three. Three minus two is one. That's fine. Uh, but the cluster values in the file allocation tables themselves are, um, are offset, you know, just a, a normal zero-based one. Root starts at two because the first two are reserved. In the data region, we don't have those reserved clusters. The data just starts at the data that would be at cluster two. So that's why I'm subtracting two here. It's kind of annoying, but I figure whenever I'm seeking to the data region, I'll just subtract two to be consistent. But it is pretty annoying to have to do that. 
Uh, but okay, we'll seek set to that in there, and then we can search the directory entries. So what we can do is do an f read. I need a directory entry, so I guess I'll add one here. I think I called it, yep, directory entry short, directory entry, I'll just have that be null right now. We'll f read to this location, we'll read into that. We'll read one thing for the size of a directory entry from the image. How do we know when we're done reading all the directory entries for a specific directory? We know it's gonna be all nulls, it's gonna be all zero. So I can say, well, directory entry name, while the first character of that name is not zero, then we still have entries to read to check if we found whatever name we got from the path for the directory. So we start at root, we're gonna look for EFI, for example. So we need to search for each directory entry to see if that name corresponds to, you know, EFI, which we'll just have this as the name because the slashes would have been skipped over. So, okay. While this is not that, we can do this and have another condition. Okay, so we can do our loops like this, or we can maybe do a do while and save a line. It's however you want to read it. Maybe I'll try do while to be fancy with it, right? <laughs> well, if do while the name is not null, we'll f read in that loop. Save a couple lines here. If I want to read into directory entry, we can mem compare, or string compare. I think directory entries I did. Um, I did a unat not character data. So that's okay. I'll just do mem compare instead of just string compare. That's fine. Otherwise, I'd have to convert to a character pointer to use that and not get compiler warnings or errors. So we'll just mem compare what we got here. Directory name. Start of that array is going to be a pointer. I want to compare to whatever name we got from the path. So that starts at start. I guess not the best name there, but that's all right. And the length we want to do is however long the name and start is. So if it's EFI, it'd be three characters. We only need to compare those three characters, which we really should compare the whole length of this name, but that wouldn't necessarily match start. So this will be kind of buggy. It will work for any prefix. So if you have a folder named EFI1 and you're searching for EFI, if that's first in the list, it'll go with EFI1. That's not great. So it'll only search for like the prefix there. Probably not the best way of doing this, but you know, it's a little buggy. Oh well, we'll see if this works first. I could search for the, the length of this, compare against the length of the whole name, which would be 11 characters. Start is less than 11, so I'm not sure that would be good, but I could do that. I don't know if that would work any better. Maybe it would. We'll see, if it doesn't work, I can change it around later. But we'll try to compare there. So if we got a, a zero, or we can do if not, that means we found the name. Yeah. So found name in directory. So what can we do in that case? We don't have to search anymore. We can leave the loop. But if we search through all of the directory and we didn't find it, we would need to be able to check that somehow. Let me do something for that. Let's have a bool found. We'll just have a found flag. And we'll say found is true. And then after the loop, we can check if found and do some things there, or if not found. If not found, then we need to add whatever thing it is. But if we did find it, that would be good. And we know whether we're working with a directory or a file up here. So I don't need to worry about that. Um, if I wanna have another function here to add, Let's say I want to do this other function here. I need to pass the type. I need the parent cluster. Okay, so we can get the cluster from the directory entry before we go down here. In case, yeah, in case we need it. See, so yeah, I'll do this in the loop here. I'll get the, the cluster where this directory is at if we found it, because after, after this loop, we won't necessarily have that data, but what we can do is store or cache the last directory that we found that we're parsing through in the path. So if we have the location of that directory, we know where to add things to it in the case of a new directory or, or a new file. So we can add that here in the directory cluster, the next one to search for, if you will. 
So we'll say, yeah, because this is an overall loop, so it'll re-get the next value here to seek to the image to check directory entries for. Yeah, so this will work. So I'll have this be the cluster from the directory entry, which is going to be first cluster high and low. And these are both 16-bit values, so I'll have to shift high left by 16 and then or it with the low value. Uh, DIR, good old namespacing, Microsoft. All right. So we'll get the cluster there. Save cluster for last directory found. We'll say that. Found equals true break, otherwise we'll keep searching. So if we get all the way through this list, this won't be updated, but we'll still have the cluster for the original directory we were searching through, and that's all right. If we didn't find the directory or the file, we need to add it, and we have the location of the last parent directory that we can add our new file to. So that's the purpose of this. So let's say we want to add a file, say add file to ESP. Instead of adding a path, we'll add a file within the path. Since that's how I wanted my logic laid out, uh, we'll have a name to add. The name is going to be the name we found in the path, start. We'll add what type of file it was, we'll add type. And we'll give that cluster value. I'm not sure I have to add something else. I may need another parm later. For right now, we'll uh, we'll try to do that. So if it could not add it, I guess we'll return false. If it could add it, then we're good. And we'd need to go on to get the next name. We would have the last cluster saved, I guess. We might do we want to get a new one for this? This new cluster value? I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know. I might worry about that in a bit if it even matters <laughs> but if we got if we got to the end of the list and we added a file we don't need to go on anymore so that should end normally but if we add a directory we do want to go on and get the next name in the path so how do we do that well we know end is going to be null terminated here so i'm going to restore the slash there just in case but i don't necessarily well if we already added the path it doesn't matter i was going to say if we added a file i don't want to add a slash at the end and go back through but if we added a file then the type is going to be for file and the loop will end anyway, so that's fine. So I'll have nb slash and I'll move past it and then start will equal end. So our last name that ended with a null is now ending with a slash for a directory. We'll go past that with plus plus and then start will be there so that will search for the end of the next path here. So if we had a path like efi boot, We'd move past the initial slash at the start, because I did path plus one, and the end will also equal path plus one, so they'll both be on this E. And then as we read through, we'll wait till we get to the slash up here. If we find that, we'll have a directory type. And if we find the directory, we'll find it. We need to go past that name. We'll save the cluster that we can look for when we have seek to it next. Okay, and we'll move past the slash here. We'll go to the B. And then we'll search to the end of there. Say it's EFI boot, boot x64. All right, we'll get this boot folder. We'll find it, get its location. We'll go to this. After we find the end of that, it'll end with a null. It'll say file, end it with a null in case. Let's say we don't have it in that path. We won't find it in the directory entries. It'll say not found, and we'll add the file. Then even if we do this, it doesn't matter. The type will be file and it'll end. So that'll be okay. All right, and I'll just show info to user about the file that we added, I guess. That would be good to check if this is working on some level. I'll say added file this and we'll add the input path. All right, so if it's done, it'll say added EFI boot, boot x64.efi, for example to have that available. Okay, so that's not too bad. So add new directory or file to last found directory. The only thing I'm worried about here is how directory cluster is updated, but that actually shouldn't matter. We might reread these things for the same value, but that's not too bad. So, okay, let's have this other function here, just because I wanted to separate data a little bit. 
You can always do these things differently than I'm doing them, of course. We'll add file to ESP. Oh, let's do this. We'll have character file name. We'll have file type type, and we'll have a directory. We'll have a cluster. I guess it's for the parent directory. So I could call it parent cluster, parent directory cluster. That's uh, sp that's specific enough. That'll be all right. All right. What do we want to do for this? So add a specific, or I'll just say add a new directory or file um, to a given parent directory. Okay. So how am I, how am I going to do that? I should have conveniently written down logic here. We did set this to five, that's good. We'll have to update that when we need to. We'll do these things, okay. So I have to find next, well, I'll just say git, because we saved it off. Git next, free cluster in fats. We'll do that. So go to, we'll go to the parent directories, uh, Cluster location. Well, we have the cluster. Go to, go to parent directories, uh, data location, and data region. So this way we know where to add a new directory entry and subsequently the file data from that. So add new directory entry for this new directory or file. And if it's directory, we'll have to set the directory bit and the file size, if it's a file, so on and so forth. Okay, then go to, go to this new files, clusters, data location, and data region. I guess that's the way. We would have updated the next free cluster, I suppose, at this point. So the initial value gotten, the initial value gotten as the next free cluster would be this location where the new file is going to be at. And we'll say add new file data for directory, add directory entries for dot and dot dot. Uh, yeah, let's say we'll do that. for file, add file data. All right, so that should be the basic layout of logic here that we need to add a file to the fat file system. So the next free cluster we already have, but we need to retrieve that data because the instances of the file system info and the VBR and stuff, the, um, an instance of that object, right, is not global, but the type def is. So we need to get that info first. So let's do that. So we'll have VBR, VBR. And we can seek to that point. It would be the image, which we need to pass in actually. Let's do that. So image, all right. So for VBR and file system info. Um, it's not the FATS, it's just the VBR. So that starts at the ESP OBA. So we'll do that times OBA size, and it'll be seek set. Okay, then we can F read into VBR. I'll switch it up a little bit. We'll just do one of those bad boys. And then we can F seek for ESP OBA plus one because the sector, the OBA immediately following the VBR is gonna be the file system info. So I need that as well. Probably just called it FS info, right? Yeah. And we can read into that. Okay, so we have those. And FS info would have the next free cluster, VBR in case I need this for, you know, updating the fats and stuff later. I don't know. We might need that info, so I have that. <laughs> the next free cluster in fats, we'll say, for lack of better words, next free cluster. And that's FS info, FSI, next free, yeah. Cool beans. 
So the parent directory is data location. Let me make sure I don't have too many compile errors, and I do. All right, path to ESP. Um, it's not what, oh, this is lowercase fs info. I was wondering why that was there. Uh, 673. Is this bad? That works. I don't know why it doesn't like that uh, that bracket right there. Expected a semicolon. Oh, return false. Yeah. That needs a semicolon. There we go. Okay. Add a semicolon there. Okay, so we have the parent directory cluster. I need to go to that location in the data region to add a new directory entry. So let's do that. We'll have to seek the image again. What location would that be? The FAT32 data LBA, of course. So that would be the initial, um, that would be sort of the base of the area, but we need to offset into that by the cluster amount. So I can add that and multiply. Also the data cluster we're adding is not subtracted by two, right? No, I'm just passing the data cluster. Okay, so we'll have to do that as well. So let's do parent directory cluster minus two. I don't want to multiply that. We'll add, yeah, we'll add that. But the cluster is not a full LBA size. Um, I'll do this in two steps because I don't want to think about it too much right now. <laughs> we could one-liner it, but that's fine. So I'll go to sort of the base of the data region, which is where the data starts. And then we'll go to the cluster as an offset within that data region, right? So let's do parent directory cluster times the size of that, which is gonna be four, but I'll just do size of that. And that'll be from the current position. We won't uh, set that as the position. So that'll go from that'll go forward from the base at, to an offset point. I'll say offset by cluster amount, that's fine. So that's where the data starts. Is that right? That's probably not right, actually. I'm thinking, I'm thinking in terms of clusters. Yeah, so that's actually, we could do it up here. I'm looking at this, I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> we have one cluster per LBA. Let's think in terms of the root directory. It's at cluster two, we subtracted two. We need to subtract two, rather. So I could do it here. And then it would just add zero, and that would be the base where its data is at. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I'm getting confused. In terms of clusters, okay. We have one, one sector per cluster, that's fine. So we can just offset by the cluster amount. So if we're adding to the root directory, this would be zero, because the cluster would be two. So we just do the base of the data. If it was at adding to the EFI directory, it's at cluster three, we'd subtract two and add one sector past the start of the data area. Yeah, so that would work, okay. Sorry about that. So let's add the directory entry for this. We'll have a directory entry. 32 directory entry short. We'll have that right now. So actually I need to get the end of the current directory entries. So at end of current data, well, current directory entries. So we'll say we'll f read again. Since we, we seeked to that position, we'll f read into that. size of directory entry from the image. And again, we'll have while. While the name is not null, then we know we still have stuff, still have stuff to read. So I'll just do this twice, that's fine. So we go to the current end. And then after we reach this point, we've read in the data for a directory entry, but the data is null, but we're one past the end because we just reached it. So we have to back up to that point to write the new directory entry at. So I'll F seek. The size is negative 32. Some platforms don't have S size T, so I can't do like a negative size of directory entry. So I'll just, I guess I'll do a negative 32 there. I don't like magic numbers though, but that's all right. From the current value. So size of dir entry equals 32. Back up to overwrite this empty spot. Now I'll just put it above. Okay, so now we can fill out a directory entry. It's gonna be zero, so that's fine. We can just fill out the new values that we need, like the name. 
depending if it's a file or not. Well, depending if it's a directory or not, we can fill out other stuff, but we have the name to add and file name up here, so I can do that. So let's do mem copy into name. Don't know why it went down there. All right, let's mem copy into name our input file name. And the size is going to be the size of file name or the length of it. What else do we have to add in a directory entry? I do not remember. We have an attribute. So let's say if type equals type directory, then we'll fill that out. Yeah, equals attribute directory, so that's right below here. Just set that bit for the number 16. All right, if it's a file, we're not gonna set that bit, so that's fine. Actually, we're gonna set the file size here as well. Well, file size is gonna be zero automatically from this, so that's, actually, that's okay. Yeah, we just set that, that's all right. Okay, NTRES is gonna be zero. We can set the create time and dates. We can do that. Those are gonna be 16-bit values. Let's say fat time and fat date we'll have. And it's called, uh, as it gets, get fat directory entry time date. I remember some stuff. Fat time and fat date. Uh, yeah, end time and then end date, so that'll work. So then we'll set the values from that. We'll have directory create time, that's going to be fat time, and create date will be the date. And also write time and write date. So after that, we'll lay out the cluster values. First cluster high and low. Although I should have less than six, uh, 64K or 16-bit limit in clusters, I'll still lay out both of these. First cluster high is going to be whatever our cluster value is, and then cluster low, and then file size. Uh, capital R, all right. Okay. So the clusters are gonna be not the parent directory cluster, but um, what, what will it be? The next, the next free cluster, yeah. So this is the next one that's free, we got that. That's where this file's going to go. So we'll add that as the cluster. So we'll do next free cluster. And I'm trying to think for file data, we'll be adding cluster values. So I actually need to do that. Did I write that down? <laughs> I did not. Because um, we, will, we will have to add the clusters. I guess I'm not doing that. I could do that up here. Or later on. But Add new clusters to fats. All right, let me think through this first to get this done first. But right now we'll have the next free cluster because this value might change is why I wanted that there. But we'll have this and we'll shift right by 16 to get the top 16 bits and and it with four Fs. Although we could probably also just cast this thing to uint 16 t That should be equivalent. I guess I'll just bitwise and it there. That's all right. And next free cluster, the lowest 16 bits. We'll just and it with four Fs for that. The file size is applicable if it's a file. We'll set file size equal to whatever the file size is, which we don't have, and we'll have to get that and do the other things. Okay, so let's get that as well. Get file size at file. So if it's a type file, we'll have to add the file data later as well. So let's say we have a file pointer. We'll have new file. And if it is a file, we'll want to get that data. So new file is f open for our file name, assuming it's in the current directory. And we'll open it for reading and binary, why not? Okay, if we couldn't do that, then this would fail. Otherwise, we'll get some data here. So let's say maybe 64 Ts. We'll have file size and bytes and LBAs. I'll set them both to zero in case we use it and it's not initialized. 
So file size and bytes is going to be what? So we'll have to F seek that to find out. Use F use F tell or F stat or something. So let's F seek the file to the end. So zero seek end. And that'll be F tell of that file. And then we'll rewind it because we'll have to read from it again later anyway. Okay, and file size in LBAs is going to be our bytes to LBAs. Remember, we have that helper function forever ago. Of the bytes. That'll convert bytes to LBAs, and we'll have those two values there just in case we need them. Okay, so that's only if it's a file. That way we have the file size available here, file size and bytes, that we can fill out in the directory entry. And we can write that directory entry, assuming we're at the image at this point, because we did an fseek to that. Yeah, okay. There we go. I suppose we could add more error handling, though, like if this write didn't succeed. I figure if we don't have writes succeed for 32 bytes, that's probably an issue, but uh, I guess I'll assume that works. I don't know. <laughs> It's just another thing to check later. I don't have specific error handling for like messaging at where something goes wrong, so. But I guess if that fails, we'll do that. Uh, okay, go to this files cluster. Um, what do I wanna do? I might add the new clusters first, because I put that up here. Okay, so how do we add new clusters to FATS? Well, we have to go to each file allocation table themselves, and we have more than one. So let's do this, so i would be zero, we'll have i be less than, I guess that's why we got the VBR data up there. And it is bpb num fats, maybe, yeah. There we go. I'll f seek to that fat by going to fat32 fats oba plus, we'll have i times whatever fat we're on. The specific lba would be the size of the fat, which would be vbr dot vb BPB fat S, right, SZ, yeah, SZ32. So the current fat we're on is gonna offset from the fats and that's an OBA, so I'll convert the bytes to seek set on the disk. Okay, because we wanna add new clusters that, now that we found the next free one. So that's the start of the fat. I do wanna go to where the cluster is at within the fat though, don't I? Yeah. So let's also go to that location. We'll F seek forward, I guess, by seek current. Um, I guess right now it'd be by the next free cluster amount. Yeah, times size of next free cluster. So it should be four bytes, and assuming it's five, it'll be four times five is 20. So we'll skip over clusters zero through four, which is correct. Okay, so at this location, we'll start writing the next free well, we'll start writing the numbers for the, the clusters that we're doing. I guess according to if it's a directory or a file, although we can take advantage of the fact that a directory will have file size and zero and will only write one cluster. So we can have something for that. We can say, uh, I guess LBAs is 64T. Let's say 64T OBA value. And OBA is gonna be less than our file size in OBAs. It'll be zero for a directory, so it won't go through this loop at all. That'll be all right. So what do we do for that? I'll have a cluster value, I suppose. And we'll increment that. And next free should also increment. And I'll put this outside the loop then. Cluster equals next free cluster. Let's see, each cluster that I write, the next free will be one after that. That actually won't be great. So let me, maybe I don't do this up here, but I'll need this outside the loop to use down here, I think. So how do I move this around? <laughs> oh, this is, uh, this is fun. Let's do this one first. We'll start at the next free from the file system info sector, but the cluster number in a FAT32 in a file allocation table, the cluster has to hold the location of the next cluster or the end of the chain, assuming all has, has gone correctly. So we'll actually, we'll increment the number. So five would point to six. That would be the location of the next thing in file data, which means this actually has to be less than one or minus one. 
because the last one can be an end of chain marker, but since these are uints, this would be a huge number. I didn't want to do that. That would be a huge number because that's a uint 64. So I guess I can say, yeah, I'll just have if type equals type file. I won't be too fancy with that. All right, we'll add the file clusters. So each cluster points to uh, next cluster of file data. Okay, and then we want to write that, and that would also increment the next free cluster that we initially started at. So I guess I can redo that here. And then I want to write that. Since we're at that location, we'll write that number into the fats at this location. Yeah. Okay. One image. All right. And that'll write each consecutive cluster number up until size of the disk in OBAs minus one, because the last one has to be the end of chain marker. Right, EOC. Uh, EOC marker cluster. That would be all Fs again. I know for FAT32, I should have the top four bits be cleared, but it's worked so far with it all set. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. Next three would be after that point as well, because we're writing an additional cluster, and then I'll write that. Okay. All right, so does that make sense? If we're adding a directory, it will only have one cluster. It won't have multiple. The file size will be zero because we would not have gone through this for a directory file type. So a directory would only add one cluster for the end of chain, right? This would be the only cluster added for a directory type. Okay, but if it's a file, we want to add everything up until the last LBA in size, and each cluster would point to the next one in the chain. I'm making them consecutive everywhere, consecutive cluster numbers, so that we don't have fragmentation and it's easier. So then we'd add the last one for the last LBA, because this loop wouldn't add the last LBA. All right, so after that point, we can also update next free cluster in FS info. So I just called it FS info. So let's do that. FSI next free. That can be our next free cluster value. So that way we can use that again in this function in the future if we add more files. We have the next free cluster value. And that's why I have that outside of that loop. And we can update that on disk as well, because we're F seeking everywhere anyway. So I'll just copy those lines. We can F seek to that location and write it back to the disk image so it's saved for the future. Okay. <laughs> a lot of stuff I'm going back and forth. I'm not doing this the best. Sorry about that, but we're getting through it eventually. So we're going to have to F-seek to different locations anyway, so that's fine. Go to this new files clusters, data location, so we can F-seek there. So F-seek the image to wherever that's going to be, which is going to be where... Next free cluster is where that would start at, but we're updating it in this loop. So let me actually make another one. I'm gonna call it starting cluster, and that's gonna be next free cluster. This will be starting cluster for new directory file. This one can be a constant. I'm not gonna change it. All right, so we'll do starting cluster staring. So where would that be? That would be from the data directory, so or the data region in the file system. So FAT32 data OBA plus the starting cluster. And the starting cluster, is that going to be offset from 2? Yeah, because it'll start at 5. Yeah, so I have to subtract 2 again from that. Because the first two clusters are reserved in the FATs. Multiply that by OBA size, and we'll do seek set. Okay, and then we'll add the file data. So for a directory, we'll have to add directory entries. So if type is type directory, we'll do some stuff. Else, it'll be a file. And 
And we'll do some other stuff. All right, we'll add the actual file data. So how do we add the directories? Well, we have a directory entry already, right? We have this stuff figured out. So the create time and date, I won't mess with the cluster value, the file size, we will probably, yeah. And the name, of course. Well, we have that time and date. Well, um, yeah, I can keep some of the values there. I was trying to think, do I want to just reset it and go forward? Would that be easier? But um, let's mem copy into there. So we need the name to be dot and dot dot. So dot and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that we have 11 spaces in there. And other than the name, the attribute would be set for directory if it's a directory. So that'll already be set here. So that's fine. Because this will be a directory. It will be this cluster number. Next free is not going to be true here as well. Actually, that would be wrong. Um, it would be the starting cluster. Yeah, because we're going to this location. So I'm glad I looked at that. <laughs> So the, the next free cluster would be updated after writing all these clusters potentially, right? Even for directory, it would be one after where it starts. But we want to get where it starts. So that would be the starting cluster. That's the cluster for this directory itself. Okay. So we would use that. So that would be set. The cluster number, the times are okay. The attributes okay. All of that should be okay. File size is going to be zero because we're not dealing with a file in the case of a directory. We can just F right again. I don't know if I want to do F rights for these or uh, like the return false. I know it's bad to have less <laughs> error handling. But I figure 32 bytes at a time is fine. Watch that bite me in the butt later. But uh, let's just say we wrote it all right. We need to write dot directory. I'll say dir entry this directory itself as a reminder to myself and we'll write dot dot so parent directory so the parent directory we did pass in the parent directory cluster at the end of here so we can use that value let's do that For cl first cluster high, we'll do parent directory cluster, again, shift left by 16. That'll be the top 15, or the top 16 bits. And low will just be uh, the low 16 bits. So let's also and those with Fs. All right, top 16 bits, low 16 bits. Of the parent directory, that's where the dot dot will be. That will also have the attribute directory bit set, because I did not change that. And the time and dates will still be set. Okay, I think that's all right. I'm concerned I'm missing something <laughs> in these directory entries, but we're setting this stuff. I guess we don't need the last access date. That doesn't matter. Yeah, we're setting the cluster values. File size will be zero for a directory. We're setting the attribute and the name. Yeah, that's all we need. Okay. Cool beans. That should be all we need there. Else we have a file data, so we want to add that. We just have to add the data itself. So I'm not adding directory entries for the file. I'm adding the file data itself. So how would I do that? Let's have a buffer. Let's have a pointer and we'll see alloc for an LBA size. And we'll free that when we're done with it. I don't think I'm doing that elsewhere. Let me make sure because I did call C alloc here. Yeah, let's. You don't really need to free 25 bytes, but we'll do that anyway. <laughs> I'm not calling malloc or alloc anywhere. Only there. Okay, just making sure my frees are in place. So what are we going to do with this file buffer, this LBA size to fi file buffer? Well, I'm going to go through all the LBAs in the file. Since we got file size and LBAs up here, when we open the file right here, we can write all of those and write the file data. So how do we do that? We can f read from the file into the buffer. So I'll read in one thing of uh, LBA size. So one byte LBA size number of times, ideally, from the file, which I called, I don't remember, new file. All 
Okay, and f read returns a value. F read returns a size t of the number of bytes actually read in member bytes. Return the number of items read or written. The, num the number of bytes transferred when size is one. Size is the second thing, it's one. Okay, so that returns a value. So I'm gonna return that in bytes read, have a variable for that. And we'll write that number of bytes to the image for this file data, yeah. So let's f write file buff one bytes read to the image. Read the file data into the buffer, write the buffer to the disk image. So the reason I'm doing it in two parts like this with bytes read is because the last LBA of the file might be a partial amount of data. If the file is 513 bytes and our LBA size is 512, that one extra byte is going to be part of its own LBA, but it's not a full LBA's worth of data. There'd be garbage if we tried to write that. So I only want to write one byte, you know, for that LBA, and the bytes read should re return one in that case, and we just write that last one for the last LBA. So that's why I'm doing this. Doing this here. And after we write all that, we'll free the buffer. Um, I guess I could put that here. Uh, I'll do in case last LBA is less than a full LBA in size, use actual bytes read to write to disk image. All right. And then we'll free the buffer. I think that's all we need to do. And assuming all is good, we're not returning false, we'll say we added the file. So I'll know if we have an error, <laughs> if we get like a seg fault immediately or other things, but I think that's all I have to do here. Hopefully, didn't get any errors there. So remove test.image, all right, write GPT. We added the file. So the reason it added the file was because I had this here already, but if it wasn't there, it wouldn't add it. Right, it would just go on and we would have 36 meg image. Let me make sure everything is okay with the image. Everything's all right, okay. So that boot x64 EF, EFI came from my other folder here. Like I had in the intro video, I had an EFI.c and everything. So if I look at that, just to make sure it's different from what I had in, in the intro, just to be different. Um, okay, I'm just setting a blue background and writing maybe a different message. Hello from UEFI world. Then we'll get a key and we'll return. So we should see yellow on blue text. So I'll copy EFIC bootx64. I guess if that wasn't made, I had a make file. So let's do that. Just in case I had changes, we'll make from that directory and we'll copy that file into here. So we have the bootx64 EFI, okay. And as we saw a second ago, it does add it to the directory. Just make sure everything's still good. We didn't mess up anything from adding that. That's all I'm trying to make sure here. Uh, we got a partition table error adding that in. That's probably not a good sign because <laughs> the CRCs don't match. Like that's that's not good, right? Okay, so I might have messed up somewhere. We'll we'll find out, right? Let's see. If we OQEMU, it doesn't load, so that's not good. All right, we do have. That means I messed up somewhere, but that's okay. All in the case of learning, right? Let's see what we have in that file system. If anything, we might not have anything. Uh, okay, so we didn't add the file correctly. All right, good to know. <laughs> oh, good to know. This always happens to me. Um, we can check the names that we found. I might just end it here and come back after I've debugged, like I usually like to do. I'll see. I'll check this for maybe 10 minutes, and if I'm not getting anywhere, I'll, I'll do that. So let's do this. We'll find percent %s. And we'll give it start, just to see what we're actually working with here. Okay, so we found all the, we found each directory in the file correctly, it looks like. That's good. Okay. That's good. So it probably went down here to found, to found. Let's just do, just so we made sure we got to this point all right. Let's do this and here. Okay, it goes each time. That's not good. It should only do that for the file at the end. It shouldn't go through this each time. Found should actually be true. So that means this isn't working. 
which I thought that might be an issue. I want to check if the lengths match, you know? You know what I mean? And mim compare is not going to work because this is going to be 11. We can check for string length of the shorter one. It's just the, the issue with doing this is that for EFI, for example, you know, if we're checking for EFI, that's three characters. But if we had a couple folders that were like EFI, one, two, whatever, it would just find the first one that starts with EFI. That's why I don't like doing this. But in this case, that might make it work. So I might say F it. And it didn't do anything, so that's that's even good. I did make it, right? Nothing to be done. Yeah, okay. That's not good. <laughs> Is this not working? I'm doing times OBA size. So the data OBA plus the cluster, which starts at two, two minus two would be zero. So it would just be data OBA. Reading into a directory entry. Interesting. We shouldn't go here for EFI. We should only go here. Well, found will be every time, but we shouldn't have, this should only happen once for boot x64. So the fact that it's happening for these two means it's trying to add these directories and that's not good. So it's probably something really obvious here I'm not doing right. Well, name is not null. If we found it, break. If we didn't find it, go on. We know start equals EFI because that's what that says. Checking directory name. Interesting, maybe this cluster isn't correct now. That cluster would be right. That calculation. Okay, well, I'll probably have to see what's up with this. I think it's something really obvious I'm not I'm not getting, but uh, yeah. I'll just have to see what's up. I know the name in here. I guess I'll have to print what name it is, right? We can do that. Directory entry name. Uh, the issue is that this is like 8 bits, it's not just the character, so that might be an issue as well. Uh, didn't really matter. Oh, the name is blank. Okay, well that's good to know. That's why it's not finding it, because the name is blank. <laughs> what am I? I'm F reading into directory entry from image. I did this. Fat32 data LBA. Is that not set? Set all the way up here. Oh, I said it as a con. Oh, uh, I'm stupid, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm an idiot. You're probably yelling at your screen the past freaking three hours, right? <laughs> I'm setting these here as global variables, but I'm setting them here again as constants. There'd be shadowed variables. God, I'm sorry about that. I'm a dork sometimes. You know how it is. Okay. So it went through. It found EFI. It didn't have to find the other things. Found boot. It read the other ones, too. That's fine. Found x64, so that's the first time it went and added only for that file. <laughs> uh, you know, if you set your variables correctly, it still doesn't work because this isn't there. We're closer. I just have to check. Okay, boot x64. Oh, I called it dot dot efi. Interesting. That's interesting. That's probably not what it's named. It's named just a singular dot. But if you set your variables correctly and don't shadow them unnecessarily, it, it, stuff does work and the logic goes correctly. So that's good. And add specific print log debugging. Okay. So start would be boot x64. I did add that right, right? Let's do this. Let's do not found. That only has a singular dot, okay. So something within this folder is adding an extra dot and we don't want that, that is no good. That's no good. Oh, and it's because, yeah, it's bootx64.efi. I don't need to add the dot to the directory entry, you dork. So that's other stuff I have to do. That's where I add the name here, okay. So the name has to be different, okay. Yeah, convert name to fat 8.3 naming. That I always forget something, but that's kind of lighter and, and fair of the other things. So we have our initial name. So sometimes debugging doesn't take too long, that's good. We have our initial name here, file name, as input. And the first part of the name needs to be up to 8 
The next part of the name needs to be up to three for the extension. So I'm going to have, let's say dot position is going to be string character of file name searching for the dot. So if we don't have a dot, I'm gonna check if the name is uh, long enough. So let's do this. Let's do check name length for 8.3 naming. And we'll do this. Um, I'm not gonna mem copy this name into here. I'm gonna mem set it all first off to spaces, it'll be 11. We'll say name and extension will be padded with spaces, cause that's how it is. And to get an idea of what I'm gonna do here, we'll say if we have a file called foo.bar, we wanna convert that to 8.3 naming and up to eight spaces for the name. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then bar would be three, so that'd be all right. And this would be 11, yep. If we had another thing that was like ba.baz or ba.z or something, that will be converted to ba with eight spaces and then just a z and then padded with spaces. That's what these would turn, but we don't want to add the dot itself like what I was doing. That's a dumb move. That's not going to work, <laughs> you know. We'll do that down there, but here I want to find if it has a dot. So our ultimate name length, if we don't have an extension and our name is just like foobar, then it can be up to 11 in length because the name can only be 11 for the short naming scheme. So if we don't have a dot, if there is no dot position, and I'll get the length of the name, we'll say. Let's say we have name length equals string length of file name. So if our name length is greater than 11 and it doesn't have an extension, we can't add it, the name's too long. And we, we could convert it like how DOS and things did it with the tilde and a number or what have you. That's explained in the FAT32, the FATGen103 doc. It's explained there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, hey, you can't do this. Uh, make a shorter name, dude. <laughs> So it's greater than 11, that's bad. Else we can have other cases here. Uh, we'll say return false. Name is too long or invalid. Okay, so in other cases we could have a dot position, but we could have a couple cases elsewise. This is one over, yeah. So if we have an extension, we need to make sure the extension to the end of the name is less or up to three characters. Um, otherwise, we need to make sure the name is not greater than 12, I think, right? Because if they have eight and then a dot and then three, that's okay, but the full name with the dot would be 12 characters. So we have to make sure it's not greater than 12. Or, and I could combine these two, but this is, this is fine. Or we can do this and we'll say name length. How do we determine this? So I, I wanna make sure names like, uh, maybe this is in two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this would be nine, eight. We'll do this, yeah. This name's gonna be invalid because it's too long, right? But I'm trying to make sure if they have a dot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This would be okay. This would not be okay. That's where this comes into play, but also this would not. I guess we could add one here. I just want to make sure there's not more than eight characters before the period. So I'm thinking, how do I do that? Well, I have where the period is. So I could say dot position minus file name, <laughs> and that would give the length up to, up to the dot. So if that's greater than eight, I don't want to allow that either. Be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can't be greater than that. That would probably be my other ending condition. Okay. So that probably isn't great, but that's what I'm doing here. Just checking for the name. This can be a constant probably. Maybe that can be as well. We'll change it later if we need to. 
All right, so how do we convert the name to that? Well, we have the input file name. We have the thing we're writing it to. Let's say we're doing this. I'm using I in a lot of places, but I think that's okay. It's scoped. Well, this scoping will be bad for that. Oh no, that's, that's only inside this loop. Yeah, okay, so we're good for scoping. We can use the letter I here. Just making sure I'm not using it elsewhere. So let's say we have the dot position. So let's say four, well, I'm already doing this, but whatever. I need to save this value outside of this loop so I know what position within the name I'm indexing into, within the input file name, rather. We'll do I less than eight, I guess. We'll do I less than the dot. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll do directory name i is going to equal the input file name i. So what this will do, if we have something like bootx64.efi, we're going to take in up until this position, so the dot minus the start, which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we'll add those seven characters as the first seven characters in the name, right, for this directory entry. But after that, if the name is less than 8, I want to pad out with spaces up until the dot, right? because it's an 8.3 naming and we have to convert it to this pad with spaces. So then I can do while well, i is less than 8, directory entry dot directory name i. Well, we don't have to do that at all. It's already padded with spaces here, so that's actually okay. But we could do this anyway. Equals space. Do that anyway. I might not have to do this mem set if I do this, but whatever. I'll keep it there for posterity's sake. <laughs> That's the name eight, let's say name eight portion of 8.3. And then we'll do the extension three portion of 8.3. I need another thing for the name actually, let's do this. I don't like doing i and j and all this, but that's all right. So I'll set j first, and then we'll increment i. I need to do i plus plus there. And j equals i. So in this case, j would be the index into our input file name. So we'll say while we still have characters to add from our input file name, which will be only up to three, but that's fine. So while file name j, then we'll add those to the directory entry. The directory entry index will be i, the input file name will be j, so do i plus plus equals file name j plus plus. Okay, and then it'll be padded with spaces from here, although we could do this. And say while i is next than 11, we'll just fill it with spaces, less than 11. Okay, so if it's boot x64, it would add bootx64, it would add a space, one or two, I forget. And then the file name, what would we do? We'd have to skip the name if it has a dot. So let's do that. If file name j equals dot j plus plus, skip. Yeah, we'll just skip the dot <laughs> to get to extension. Okay, and then we'll extract that. The extension would be while we still have a name to extract. So yeah, this would make more sense if I was doing an example, right? Sorry about that. If we had this file, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'd add those seven characters here. Set J equal to seven. We have another character, so we'll pad that out with a space up to eight. J in this case would be a dot because we found the dot. So we'd skip past that to the E. And then while there's still characters in the name, we'd add E, F, and I. And if somehow we still have to go to 11, if the dot, if the extension wasn't three characters, then we'll pad out with spaces there. So actually we don't probably need to do that mem set actually. So that'll be all right. I'm trying to think of anything else I need to add. If it doesn't have a dot, so what if it was like bar mitzvah? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a good word to add. Ele elephantitis, that's a big word. What if we're adding a file called elephant? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight characters. It would add, there is no dot. 
Ooh, so that's not good. What if there isn't a dot? This would not happen. Uh, we would just mem copy the name, actually. So let me do this. If dot position. Uh, we'll do that. I'm glad I go through these examples, because I find out lapses in... Save that. Lapses in my logic. So if there's not a dot position, we'll probably just um, copy the name, right? Yeah, we'll just copy the name in there. Well, in that case, I would need to mem set. So actually, yeah, let me let me have that mem set back. All right. Even if we don't use that, if it overwrites it here, I don't care. I still have it down here. So. <laughs> oh. Mem copy the length of file name string length, which we got name length above name length. It'll be up to 11. So we'll just copy that name in directly. It'll be padded with spaces because we will mem set with spaces to start off with. So start with all spaces. Name extension would be space padded. Well, yeah. In either case, in either case, it'll be space padded, padded with spaces. In this case, we'll fill it out anyway, but in the other case, we'll just there. And if it's less than 11 in length, it'll be padded with spaces from this mem set. Uh, so that should be okay. Let me do this. Elephants would go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that'll be all right. Now I think I have everything. <laughs> About an hour and a half. Uh, that's okay. So yesterday when I tried to do this, I spent twice as much time so yeah, I should just write everything first draft first and then go through it. Because even if I have debugging and miss some stuff, it still takes me half the time the second time. So, all right. Uh, comparison between pointer and integer, 685. Right here. Yeah, it doesn't need... Well, if dot position. I guess it would be dot position minus file name. That would be the length that we're adding. If it is foo.bar, dot would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3. It should be 3. It would add 0, 1, and 2 and stop. Yeah, so that should be okay with that. Okay, added file. Moment of truth. Does it boot up? Hey, it boots up. Hey. Oh, I pressed a key. I couldn't zoom in because I pressed a key. Let's do that again. Let's go to view and we'll just do zoom in a bunch of times because if I press the keys to zoom in, it counts it as a key press and it exits the thing. It says hello from UEFI world, yellow text, blue background. I'm going to press Q and it removes it. Uh, because again, that's what I told it to do. Take a key and shut down with the yellow text on a blue screen. Hello from UEFI world. So that works. And okay, that works. That's good. <laughs> Oh, uh, if you wanted to see it not reset, just to check what's in there, we can do that as well. I will have this, um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, actually. I don't want to reset. There's a warm reset. It's something like that. How do we do that? I don't remember, but I have it in here up here somewhere. So reset warm or shut down platform specific. We could do this. We could reboot, like reset warm, maybe. I don't know if that would matter. It would probably go back into the shell and just reboot everything. So never mind. I'll just leave it. I wanted to see if we could go back to the BIOS and check what the file name is, but I know the name's correct because it booted up. So actually, yeah, there's no point in doing that. Okay. That was what I wanted to accomplish. I know that took a while to walk through and debug my logic, but, you know, that's life sometimes. I did not make the flag yet. I'll leave that open. I did add those. I did add the function, even though I'll leave the command line flag open. Okay. So I do want to make another file, disk image.inf, just to hold the size of the disk image that we can use later within an EFI application. If we load this from the EFI boot directory, we'll say, and we can write like an installer application later for a, for a bootloader. So we need to know how we need to know how big our disk image is in case we want to say read the disk image itself into memory again, and then write that to another drive. I need to know how much data to write, and that would be the size of the disk image. So I want to save that in a file that we can access later, because that was 
the easiest thing I could think of. So I'm going to do that and then I'll call it and we'll do flags on the next one. Yeah, let's do that because this video is going on long enough anyway, but you know, oh well, that's not too bad. And it'll only add that file if it's found. So let's say add uh, disk image info file to hold at minimum the size of this disk image. This could be used in an EFI application later as part of an installer, for example. Okay, so how are we going to do that? I'm going to make a file for it. So I already have this FP open, so I can use that in multiple places. Actually, I don't need to do that. I can just call this, but I'd have to fill out file data. Let's make a, I'll just make a function for that so I don't clutter up my main function too much. Let's say, if not, add disk image info file, given the image. We'll say could not add disk image info file to image or to whatever I called this. I didn't give it a name, image name. If my face is covering that, apologies, but just says image name. Put that up there. I'm just doing that. So let's add a, a function called add disk image info file. Just add more functions to everything. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves functions. Hold that minimum the size of the disk image. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, we'll have an image here. I'm also trying to think of how I want to do error handling in the future. Like this is one way, right? Returning Boolean true false, have error conditions, propagate that Boolean. There's probably better ways to do that in C. Although I don't want to resort to like global error no variables and stuff like Unix necessarily. There's probably different ways of error handling in C, but anyway. How are we going to do this? Let's say I have a buffer to write a string into with the data we want to write uh, to a file. So let's say we have that. Maybe character data this time to be fancy. It doesn't matter. File buffer again. Maybe the size. We won't need that much data. So I guess I could do the size of an OBA. We could just have that be on the stack. OBA size, that would be okay. We can S print F into there. I don't know. We'll do more allocations, whatever. That's fine. I just have to remember to free that sucker at the end. Okay, so let's do S print F or S N print F. Let's see how we do that size. So we have a pointer, we have the size, we have restrict format. Writes at most size bytes, including terminating null. Okay. So let's write into file buff OBA size. Is it file buff? We're writing into a string, right? Yeah. Okay. What do I want to write into there? Let's do whatever I said I was going to, right? <laughs> what is this going to be? Disk size equals that? Yeah, let's just do that. Disk size equals percent D or percent U or whatever. Percent U, that's probably all right. Actually, how big is our image size in OBAs? 64 bit, okay. So if I want this to work on Linux and Windows for some of the most part, <laughs> they both don't have percent LUs, but they do have PRIU64 available as a macro. That's an int types, so I do have to add that here int types.h. So that is a macro that expands depending on what you're running. The compiler and platform you're on is, you know, it, it expands to either like percent %lu or percent %lou, you know, etc. So that way I can do percent. I have to do that in there. And then end it with, I'll end it with a new line. That's fine. And we need a thing for that. I'll just do this like this. So one, one per line. That's fine. And I'll do the image size, not in OBAs, but just in bytes, which I had down here. Yeah. 
So that's at the bottom in main. Just plus padding. Okay, so that'll be like 36 megs in this default case, right? And it'll add that in bytes. So that'll be okay. So that is a string file buffer. I'm going to write that to a file. Let's say fp. That's going to be f open. Um, yeah, we'll say disk image. It needs to be 8.3 value viable naming, inf. So I'll do that. Yeah, we'll open that for writing. I'll just write binary, I guess. That's fine. Or you can write text and it would convert that to CRLF as needed. I'll just do write binary. Yeah. Okay, so if we can't make the file, that would be bad. But if we can make the file, let's write to it. Well, if write file buff, that's going to be a pointer because it's a string. We'll write up to LBA size. No, I'll write string length. Uh, is this going to be converted to characters if I do this? It will, right? So that should be okay. I'm hoping. <laughs> One to FP. Okay, we'll do that. And I'll F close. So we have disk image that INF. Okay, and since we have our other functions to add stuff, we can do if add path to ESP, we'll have a path and an image. And the path is going to be, we'll say EFI boot, but the path needs to be in a separate thing here. Which I'm gonna have to string copy into. Yes, yeah, so let's have path again, 25 or 50 or whatever. The only reason I have to do that is because string literals are in read-only memory, and at the start of add path, this can bring a seg fault if I set it to a string literal, depending on optimizations and how it's compiled and everything. That's why I have to string copy stuff into there, which is annoying. So let's string copy into path, whatever we want to add. Let's say EFI boot, you know, disk image dot INF. Whatever, that's fine. Because we would have made that file right here. I'm going to add that here. If not add, we'll return false again. Should give us more specific error, but that's okay. We'll do that. I like doing that. Makes it look like the Eye of Sauron. But okay, then we'll see if we added that. And if all that went through, it should say added that file. And then we can look at it. If I get rid of the bootx64 right now, it won't add that in. But it will add the other file. LBA size makes pointer from int. Character restrict, constant character pointer restrict. Uh, SN printf? Is that not how that works? Oh, I did S printf. It, it helps when you use the right function. Usually that helps, right? That usually helps if you use the right function to what you're trying to do. And then things tend to work. Okay, added file, if I boot disk image. Okay, there we go. So if we look at that in the shell, Let's see what that looks like. We'll go fs0 colon. cd into efi. Nothing there. cd into boot. Hey, looky there. Disk image the inf. 19 bytes. 19 bytes. All right. Just to look at it again. So we should have cat, I think. So disk image. We do have tab completion. There we go. So disk size 37783040. And we have that there. So we can read that info within an EFI application later if we load it from the local file system. And we can look at our test.image and I just meant dash L that time actually. 37830040. So we wrote that successfully. That'll, that'll update if our disk image size updates. I used the same function I did earlier. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to do for a minimum viable product for I don't have the command line flag, but I will add that. So let me actually add that below. Um, yeah, cut that. Set OBA size, set the disk image. Add files in ESP. That's going to be this one. 
See, before I only had it hard-coded to EFI or boot directories or root. Now you can add it to whatever directory. You could even make a new directory if you really wanted to. But that's my minimum viable product for this. So past this point, the next video or two is going to be over adding different command line flags in order to change the EFI and data partition sizes. If you want, I might have minimums set. I'll check for minimum sizes. Test if we can change the OBA size, although my tools don't work with non-512 byte OBAs, but what have you. I'll have it at least available to change through a, th through a flag. I did a helper function to do that. Um, we'll set the disk image name if you want to name it something else. We'll have that thing to add files from the file system. Yeah, I can't verify with these, unfortunately. I'll have a flag to add to the data partition, which is a really easy one. I just didn't want to do it in this in this video, but that'll be easy. We can do a, an info file as well for that. And then I'll have a flag to make a fixed VHD so you can natively mount under Windows if you want to mess with the ESP. Or you just want to know how a virtual hard disk is made is kind of an extra. And I'll add some help text and stuff and info to the user. So I'll do that. Let's put this here. Add text for image size and other creation info in main when running. Okay, because I did that before. But other than that, I'll add command line flags on the next video or two. So thank you all for watching. Just to check that directories are made, let me do that here. So instead of EFI boot, let's add some other directories. Let's add directory A and test B, we'll say. Let's see if that even works, right? It says added file. Let's see if QEMU works. Uh, FS0. Hey, we have directory A and we have test B. So probably didn't go into directory A. It did not add that correctly, but we do have directory A. I shouldn't have tested this because now I want to fix it. And it didn't add the disk image into test V. It just added, okay, so it added everything to root. I wanted to end the video there. That was my whole point, but that didn't work. Now did it? <laughs> it's because of this cluster. It finds the root cluster. I know it does. It doesn't find it, so it goes through. It adds it to root, but it doesn't populate it when it comes back, so it's still adding under the root cluster. Interesting. Okay, so how would I update that? Do I have to update it from here? Possibly, possibly. We could update that. Like, I could make this a pointer. What happens if I make that a pointer? Hmm. And then we look for this, and we'd add the data to that. And that's all that it's at, right? Yes. Okay. So what I have, if I added a directory, we're adding it for a different cluster for the parent. The current one is at starting cluster. So let's do that when we return. Set directory cluster for new parent directory if one, if a directory was just added. Let's do that. So if type, let's type directory. Then parent directory cluster is going to be the starting cluster. Okay. So that way, hopefully it will add this under root and then this under that and then this under that, right? Probably won't, but you never know. That would be a nice, simple fix if it does work. Oh, directory A, oh, did I just fix that? Test V, oh, disk image, you did not go under test.b. It's so close. Under test B, we have disk image and we have test B. Now that doesn't seem correct. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm messing things up. Let's remove the image. Let's make it again. 
We don't have test image. All right. I have issues here. Yeah, it says, oh, disk image and test.b, and we have disk image and test.b. Is that, oh, it's recursive. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Why is everything messing up? I can't do anything right. It's a new starting cluster. So what happens if we set the new cluster here? If we didn't find it and we add directory A, uh, we get test.b, we search the last directory, which will be the starting cluster for directory A that we just added. We're looking for test B. We don't find it. We should add that under directory A. We search that for test.image. It should add that to there. We could do this. Let's move the info up to add file. That would help with debugging, of course. I'll just say added. Added something to what our what is our path going to be? File name. Well, I could add it in both actually. And yeah, I can add it in both. It does go through three times. Interesting. It might be something with this loop here I have to fix. We don't want to add things infinitely recursively. That would not be good. I want to be able to add other directories in between, though. It does add directory A and test.b under directory A. Like, that's good. But it's it's then it goes sort of haywire here. I pass the cluster for test B in this case. What I could do is change to fseek within here, I guess, if I find it. But then we would just set this up here. So that might not be, that might not matter. But I don't set a cluster unless we go through here. So the old one would still be in play. That might be why. That's weird. Because it adds those three. It adds this under here but it also adds the same thing again, which would be like name isn't updating. But that's not true. Oh, it could be because I'm adding the slash here, right? Regardless, I'm adding the slash. Mm, that could be it. That could be it. But if I add type equals type file break, then I don't know. We can have another ending condition here. That way it doesn't go through and replace this, the null with the slash. So it doesn't go back and tries to do that again. But that shouldn't matter. I don't think that matters here. But we can see. We can see. Yeah, that's test image under directory A. It's not what I want. I guess the new starting cluster, well, we'd want the next. We'd want this, the next free cluster. That's where this will be written for the directory. We're subtracting two for that. Maybe I have to add two. No, because starting cluster is, is already after two. I don't know. I'm kind of stumped. I might come back after I debug a bit. That would be good. And then I'll go over what I find instead of just, you know, flailing about here on camera and having to, to edit that down. So I'll be back in a little bit after I figure this out. Uh, thanks for bearing with me on this long long video and and yeah debugging adventure so yeah see you in a second 
All right, guys, this is why you have to take breaks. You have Pomodoro, get some water, walk the dog. You know, you go outside, do something, right? <laughs> take breaks once every couple hours. Um, because, you know, you just go along and you think you're doing the right thing and you're not. So <laughs> inside of add file to ESP, it was just a one liner, as it often is. Where I'm updating the free cluster, the next free cluster, this f this was an f read. So what I was doing before was I was setting the free cluster, but I was always overriding it with whatever it was to begin with. So it would infinitely go to the same cluster value and add the same thing kind of infinitely deep through the next thing in the path. And anyway, change that to f write to actually set the next cluster value so that <laughs> Uh, basically down here it was adding directory entries for each thing, you know, and just adding to itself, adding to the same initial directory A directory each time. But uh, yeah, we want to actually set the next free cluster in the disk image, so we'll do that. So first it'll be 5, then it'll be 6, then it'll be, you know, whatever for the next directory. Alright, yeah, actually set it, don't read it and override itself, actually just F write and set that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm a dork. All right. Then we don't need we don't need this file type break here. I just commented that out. We don't need that because when it hits the file, it'll end the loop and it'll be okay. All right. So if you wanted to be fancy and add this, which I'm going to change it back, but if you wanted to add something like this, whatever files you want, we can put it behind a um, a command line flag later. But right now for this text, it still said this still says that. You know, added each portion of the thing. So fs0, so we have directory A now, and under there, oh, there's only directory B. Wow, would you look at that. So we can cd into test B, and we have the disk image file, and it is okay. And we don't have infinite numbers of files anymore and directories, so that's good. I'm going to change this back now that I know it works, and we can be assured of that just as a final thing there. We only added that one initially. Wish I could start this up when it's like full screen. There probably is a way to do that. But here now we only have EFI and boots. And in here we have the disk image file. Hey, so we're all good. Can't open it if you name it the wrong thing. Name it the right thing. All right. So that's what I wanted to accomplish. Um, next time I'll add some, or next video, I'll add some command line flags and things, and we'll do like a git opt replacement, just a really simple string comparison on what flags were passed. And we'll set some image sizes, maybe do some fixed virtual hard disk footers or things. But anyway, this shows that we can add a file. We can add arbitrary, yeah, pretty much arbitrary uh, directory folder structures in the ESP and then a file at the end of it, which is more than my previous iteration of this disk image tool had, so that's good. Um, I'll say added path. I'm going to get rid of this added file for each one now that I know it's working. So if we write it and we add a path, it'll just say we added this as a file. So, okay. That's all I wanted to do on this video. Yeah, I look forward to options and flags later and maybe some extra text <laughs> when we're creating the thing. And I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. I'll try to get on and set the ESP and data partition sizes as a flag. We'll have the LBA sector size be a flag. Although again, my tools don't work for non-512 by OBAs, but that's fine. We'll add the disk image name, that'll be easy. We'll have a thing to add to the data partition, which is easy. We'll just seek to the data LBA and write the file there. We'll add another info file for each file added to the data partition, in case we add a kernel or something. We can know how big it is, maybe if it's an elf or not, if we can detect that. Maybe we just read the first header bytes and see. And I'll have a fixed VHD. Maybe we'll get through all that on the next video. If not, it might be two more. But thanks for watching so far. Appreciate it. I will have the EFI applications coming soon. I just wanted to get a full tool together if people want to know how to write one for making GPT hard disk images. And as of this point, I have my sort of minimum viable product ready that we can go ahead and write and add a thing and it'll boot up. So yeah. Again, thanks. Appreciate you all. I'll see you on the next one. Take more breaks when you're coding because debugging is a lot easier after a break. But anyway, <laughs> I'll see you then. Cheers.